In this video, we're going to calculate the length of the arc of the parabola y squared equals x from the point 0, 0 to 1, 1. Now, you'll do notice that, yes, this is y squared equals x, right? This is a concave right parabola. Uh, we want to go from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So we actually only need the upper half of the parabola. It, what we can do is we can solve for y here and get y equals the square root of x. Normally, there should be a plus or minus here when you take the square root. But like I said, we just want the upper half, which is the positive side. So we'll just keep it as y equals the square root of x. And this will be our function describing what's going on here. We want to find the length of the arc, a.k.a. the arc length. And so therefore, by the arc length formula we saw before, you get s equals the integral of ds, which equals uh, the integral of the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, and you can go from there. We saw previously that if you factor out the dx squared in this equation right here, this will end up with the integral of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. You can integrate this thing with respect to x if you want to, right? Uh, and that works nice and dandy, but in this situation, our function f would be this guy right here. We could take the derivative of y prime to be 1 over 2 times the square root of x. We could plug that in there. That would be perfectly nice and kosher, but let me mention to you that I keep on throwing this formula out here because it's actually quite versatile. We went from here to here because we factored out the dx squared. Well, what if we factored out instead the dy squared? What if we did that instead? Um, what would happen is your integral would look something like the following. If you factored out the dy squared away from the dx squared, you'll get a dx over dy quantity squared plus 1. You then get a square root of dy squared, which this thing would simplify to be the following. You're going to get 1 plus g prime of y squared dy. That is to say, you could integrate with respect to y just as easily as you could integrate with respect to x. And because of that, you can actually make a choice. Do I prefer to integrate with respect to x or do I prefer to integrate with respect to y? And in this option here, if we take y to equal the square root of x, they're going to have to deal with a 1 over 2 square root of x in, inside of a square root. So it's a nested square root. It's like, hmm, I'm not sure I like that one so much. On the other hand, if we just take the original expression and say that g of y, which is x, is equal to y squared, that situation seems much more tame to me because g prime of y would equal just 2y. And again, that, that, that doesn't seem so horrible whatsoever. Um, and so actually this format where we're going to integrate with respect to y is going to be a little bit more preferable here. Uh, and so the thing is, I've emphasized this so that you know there's, a, there's an option. You can choose, do I want to integrate with respect to y or integrate with respect to x very easily um, with arc length. We ran across this problem when we dealt with volume problems in the past, where we had two methods, the washer method and the shill method. And the reason we had two methods is so that we could always integrate with, like, with respect to x or y. You know, we could choose the variable that was best for the situation. We don't need two formulas for arc length because the arc length formula is symmetric in that regard. It can be easily adapted to dx or dy. So our arc length is going to look like the integral for the square root of 1 plus 2y squared dy. Um, our, our boundaries are going to be y coordinates, y equals y equals. Uh, going back up to the original picture, right? y will range from y equals 0 to y equals 1. Good uh, 1 there. Good news here, if you actually didn't wrote the x coordinates, you would be right for the wrong reasons. That's that's still correct, you know. <laughs> I guess that I guess that's good news, right? So we're going to integrate from zero to one right here. Uh, so rewriting this integral, because uh, we can square the two y, integrate from zero to one, the square root of one plus four y squared dy. And we've seen integrals like this before. This is actually one where a trigonometric substitution might be quite appropriate here. Uh, we could set, because uh, notice we have a sum of squares inside of a square root. Uh, we could set 2y, 2y equal to tangent theta. Uh, this would then tell us that 2dy would equal secant squared theta d theta. So solving for dy, we get dy equals just one half. 
secant squared theta d theta. And we also know that the square root of one plus four y squared is gonna equal a secant theta. Uh, so make those substitutions. You can draw a triangle to help you out on this last one if you want to. But using those substitutions, we're gonna see that we're gonna integrate the square root of one plus four y squared becomes a secant theta. Uh, we then get for dy one half secant squared theta d theta, like so. If we change the bounds as y ranges from one and zero, what's the corresponding theta values? We'll plug this into this equation right here. Uh, when y equals zero, the left-hand side becomes zero, so we get tangent of zero. Arctang so sorry, tangent of theta equals zero. The arctangent of zero gives us a zero. So that's nice right there. On the other hand, if you plug in a one into this equation right here, uh, you're going to get just a two on the left-hand side. And so when does tangent theta equal two? That one might not come to us immediately. That's just gonna be arctangent of two. Uh, which again, that's not one of those special angles we had memorized from our trig class. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to call this arc, arc tangent of two. I'm going to just call this alpha for short. We'll know that it's arc, it's arc, arc, arc tangent of two. But just for again simplicity's sake, our integral range from zero to alpha right here. So notice what our integral has now become. Uh, this thing is now one half the integral from zero to alpha of secant cubed theta d theta. And so we can proceed to compute this antiderivative like we've done in with our trigonometric integrals in the past. If secant cubed might look a little bit familiar to you because we actually did do this one in a video previously. Uh, it, it was actually somewhat of a doozy. Uh, we're not gonna do it again. If you are curious how the calculation goes, please view that video. Uh, but we're just going to use the conclusion we had from that previous calculation uh, that the antiderivative of secant cubed um, is going to be one half times secant theta tangent theta plus the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. Oh boy, ran out of space there. And this will go from alpha to zero right there. And there's there, there's a there's an absolute value showing up right here. So again, there's a little bit of a calculation going on, a little bit, it's an understatement. There, there is a difficult calculation there that we're kind of skirting over because we've done it before. So the one halves will combine to give us a one fourth. That's a coefficient that sits out in front. Uh, let's stick these numbers in everywhere else. Uh, so we're gonna get secant of alpha times tangent of alpha. Uh, then we're going to get the natural log of the absolute value of secant of alpha plus tangent of alpha. That's the first bit. Then we're going to subtract from this secant of zero, tangent of zero. Also, we need to subtract from this the natural log of the absolute value of secant zero plus tangent of zero, like so. So that's a little bit of a doozy, but let's try to simplify this thing. We're gonna start off with the zero portion first. So remember, tangent of zero is equal to zero. We saw that already. So you get a tangent zero there. So this whole thing is gonna to go to zero. You're gonna get tangent of zero right here. So that's also zero. Secant of zero is not zero. So don't make that mistake here. Uh, secant, remember secant, uh, see, if you're not sure, I mean, again, you could just consult the calculator, but secant of zero will equal one over cosine of zero. And hopefully we do remember this one. Cosine of zero is one. So you get one over one, which is one. So um, because if we had the natural log of zero, that would be a no-no. Natural log of zero is not a real number, but secant of zero is actually gonna equal one. Uh, this actually then gives us the natural log of one, which the natural log of one is zero. So it does turn out that all of these portions, uh, this whole right-hand side here is all gonna go down to zero, okay? So what else do we have here? We're gonna have a one fourth, a secant of alpha. Remember, what was alpha? Alpha was arctangent of two. Now, when you take arctangent, when you take tangent of arctangent of two, that one's pretty clear. That's gonna be a two. And when you look at the second one, you're gonna get the natural log of secant of alpha again, right? Plus two. 
Tangent of alpha is not so bad, but how does one do secant of alpha? Um, if you had a triangle diagram listed earlier, well, well, I guess we didn't need one for this one, but let, let's draw a triangle real quick to kind of see what's going on here. Uh, so if we have a right triangle associated to the angle alpha here, all right? What do we know about alpha? Alpha is arctangent of two. So we know that tangent of alpha equals two, that is two over one. That's our opposite over adjacent. And so by the Pythagorean equation, we get the square root of five over here. Uh, one squared plus two squared is five. Uh, so this is our right triangle. And so if we look for the secant ratio here, secant of theta, sorry, secant of alpha. Well, secant is one over cosine if you forgot. Um, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant will be the reciprocal. You're gonna get the square root of five over one. And so therefore secant of alpha is equal to the square root of five. We can make that substitution in above. So we're gonna get one fourth secant of alpha is the square root of five. You get a two there, so you get two root five. Uh, then you're gonna get the natural log of the absolute value of two plus the square root of five, like so. Now two plus the square root of five is already a positive number. Uh, you can distribute the one fourth through if you so choose. And so to finish this thing off, we're gonna get the square root of five over two uh, plus one fourth, the natural log of two plus the square root of five, like so. And so again, we get this, we get this interesting irrational number as the length of the curve along this parabola, right? Uh, and this would be approximately, again, we probably wouldn't need an estimate to know how big this is. We get an approximation of 1.478943 like so uh this is this is a pretty nice estimate here and we get, we get this pretty cool pretty cool number um this this calculation here did require trigonometric substitution um it was a little bit harder than the previous example we did but this is starting to show you that arc length formulas can get very comp or that is the arc length integral can get very complicated very quickly when it comes to trying to calculate these arc lengths here so you have to be very cautious the square root of one plus the functions derivative squared that is our formula but it doesn't generally lead to a simple anti-derivative and we'll see that in our next video that things can even get worse than we are right now